Good afternoon, and thank you for joining us for this community briefing on COVID-19. Joining me again is interpreter Margie Prop, and thank you, Margie, for providing your services. Since last Saturday, we have lost seven community members to COVID-19. The total number of deaths in Lincoln and Lancaster County now stands at 42. On behalf of our city, I offer condolences to all those who are grieving the loss of their loved ones. And on behalf of those grieving, I'm asking everyone in Lincoln and Lancaster County to recognize that as you hear these numbers, these are not anonymous strangers. These are our neighbors, these are our colleagues, employees, these are our parents and grandparents, these are our friends. The choices we make truly are a matter of life and death for them. To prevent further loss and suffering, let's recommit to the proven public health practices that work. Let's practice the three W's and wear our masks, wash our hands and watch our distance, keeping at least six feet of distance between ourselves and others whenever we are around people from outside of our household. These important practices are being reinforced by public health directors across Nebraska, who now urge us to avoid the three C's, crowded places, close contact, and confined spaces. Avoiding crowded places means avoid gathering in groups where you can't maintain that six feet of distance. Avoiding close contact means wearing a mask and maintaining six feet of distance when you're with people who are from outside your household. And avoiding confined spaces means avoiding enclosed spaces with poor ventilation. All of us have the power to stop the spread of COVID-19 if we avoid these three Cs and if we commit to those three Ws, wearing a mask, washing your hands, and watching your distance. For more detailed information about, a, about how to stay healthy and safe, as well as how to access resources that are available to residents and businesses during this pandemic, please visit our website at covid19.lincoln.ne.gov. There you'll find the dashboard with the latest COVID-19 data, and we update that dashboard daily at about this time. Today in Lincoln and Lancaster County, an additional 142 individuals have tested positive for COVID-19. The total number of lab-confirmed cases is now 8,668, and our total recoveries identified to date are up to 3,797, and we're grateful for those. At our website, you'll also find the COVID-19 risk dial. This color-coded tool communicates the level of risk of spread of COVID-19 in Lincoln and Lancaster County. We update the dial every Friday, and this week we remain at the elevated orange level. This indicates that the risk of community transmission of COVID-19 remains high, uh, but we have seen improvement in some of our indicators. New cases remain high, but the number has leveled off. Hospitalizations have declined slightly, and testing turnaround time has improved, which helps with more timely contact tracing. For these reasons, the risk dial did not move any further north. Here to provide more details is Health Director Pat Lopez. Thank you, Mayor. The Health Department continues to use local information and data from the past three weeks in five primary areas to determine the risk of COVID-19 to the public in our community. Most of the data is available to the public on the COVID-19 dashboard. The website also includes an explanation of the metrics we use to determine the dial position. You'll find that just underneath the dial on the website. One primary factor is the number of new cases. This week so far, 573 cases have been reported. Our weekly case counts have continued to be at a high level for six straight weeks now, with a weekly average of about 609 cases. We have been dealing with the impact of the pandemic for the past eight months, but nearly half of our total cases have occurred in just the past two months. This should be concerning to all of us as we need, and we need the public to understand the seriousness of our local situation. Our entire community is being impacted by those who are not wearing masks and who are not practicing physical distancing. The virus is now affecting all age groups. However, we are seeing older age groups being impacted now more than any time during this pandemic. 
the weekly average of new cases in those aged 60 to 79 has gone from 16 in the three summer months, June, July, and August, to 58 in September, and to 85 so far now in October. The weekly average of new cases in those age 80 and older has increased from three in the summer months to 10 in September and 15 so far in October. Individuals over age 60 are at higher risk of complications from the virus. So the increase in cases in these age groups has resulted in more hospitalizations and more deaths in our community. We also look at the seven day rolling average. This is the average of daily cases, which shows the high number of cases we have experienced over an extended period of time. The trend line has been fairly fat, flat in the 80s until last week when it moved up to the 90s. This week we reached se a seven day rolling average of daily cases in the hundreds. A second factor is the positivity rate. The average weekly positivity rate remains in the teens where it has been for eight weeks now. The rate so far this week is 13.8%. Again, this is a strong indicator that the virus is widespread in the community and the risk of spread is very high. Another factor we look at is laboratory testing capacity and turnaround time. While testing remains widely available in our community, the effectiveness of testing is highly dependent on how quickly the lab results are provided to our health department. Fortunately, the average turnaround time has improved at the end of last week, and that improvement has continued into this week. In the two-week period from September 27th to October 10th, just 31% of our lab results were received in two days or less. From October 11th, through this week, 64% of our lab results have been received within two days. The sooner test results are received from the labs, the sooner our public health nurses can begin the important step of contact tracing, which you know is the critical piece in preventing community spread and outbreaks. Our public health nurses are making contact with those testing positive within 24 hours of receiving notification from the state over 90% of the time. If you receive a call from a public health nurse because you have contracted COVID-19 or you were exposed to someone who is a positive case, please do your part in keeping your family and community safe by answering the call and cooperating with, the con with our public health nurses. This cooperation is crucial to slowing the spread of the virus in our community. The fifth primary factor is the number of people hospitalized for COVID-19 locally. The number of COVID-19 patients in Lincoln hospitals has remained high over many weeks now. The average daily number of COVID-19 patients in Lincoln hospitals has increased from 18 in the month of August to 40 in September, and now up to 59 so far in October. These hospitalizations are re result of the large increase in cases that began in September. Unfortunately, many have become seriously ill, and 18 people in our community have lost their lives from the virus this month. As you can see from the chart, this is the highest number of deaths in a one-month period since the pandemic began, and we still have more than a week left in October. The 18 deaths this month are 43% of all deaths reported locally so far. The 18 deaths also include two people in their 40s and three people in their 50s. This is not just impacting those over age 60. Today, COVID, today 61 COVID-19 patients are being reported and seven are on ventilators. 32 of those individuals are from Lancaster County and four of them are on ventilators. 29 are from outside our community. This map shows how the metrics associated with these primary factors are pl plotted on the color-coded risk assessments. Almost all of our measures have moved further toward the upper right portion of the chart. Almost all of the measures have <clears throat> In that right portion, we see no metrics are in green. Contact tracing is the only metric one in the yellow. 
connected cases, ICU availability, testing turnaround time, and average daily hospitalizations have improved slightly, but remain in orange. The remaining metrics of community spread, positivity rate, new cases, and case rate per 1,000 population are all in the red. You will find the location of the risk dial represented by the blue square outlined in red in the elevated orange section. As you know, the current directed health measure will expire October 31st. We have completed the new directed health measure that will be in effect from November first, and I'd like to outline a few of the more substantial changes. Gathering limitations have changed to be in line with the current state directed health measure. Indoor gatherings are limited to 10 people or 50% of occupancy, whichever is greater. Outdoor gatherings are limited to 10 people or 75% of occupancy, whichever is greater. Both indoor and outdoor events are not to exceed 10,000 people. For bars and restaurants, our local DHM has always required that parties consist of eight or fewer individuals and that individuals remain seated unless ordering, using the restroom or playing games. The most recent state DHM now requires this as well. The, our local DHM continues to require these parties remain at least six feet apart. An event plan must continue to be submitted to the health department and approved for any gathering that expects 500 or more patrons in attendance at one time. Any organization connect, conducting youth sports must submit a sport activity plan and the health department must approve the plan before practices or events occur. The owners of the venues in which the youth sports occur must limit spectators to 25% of capacity. Spectators also must be in groups of no larger than eight and be six foot distance from each other. Our gyms, fitness, and health centers and martial arts studios are limited to 10 people or 50% of occupancy, whichever is greater. Individuals also are required to stay at least six feet apart. This was reduced from 75% to be consistent with the new state-directed health measure. Religious gatherings, including weddings and funerals, continue to be governed by the state-directed health measure. Before I turn this back to the mayor, I wanted to remind everyone that flu season is here. It is important to get your flu vaccination and to do that before Halloween if possible. With the flu virus and the coronavirus both active in our community, getting a flu vaccine is more important than ever to protect yourself and your loved ones and to keep from overwhelming our health system. Vaccines are available through your doctor, your local pharmacy, or your employer. The health department is offering flu vaccinations for anyone in the community aged six months and older. An appointment is required. To schedule your flu shot, simply call 441-8065, 402 that is. Uh, appointments will be available between 8 to 3.30 weekdays at the health department clinic at 31st and O Street. You'll find more information about upcoming flu clinics on the health department's website at health.lincoln.ne.gov. Thank you, Director Lopez. And just a quick clarification on my previous remarks. It's connected cases, the number of connected cases that have leveled off, not new cases. As decisions about the best way to slow the spread of COVID-19 are made, our Lincoln Lancaster County Health Team continues to reach out to community members, businesses, and organizations for input and feedback about how to implement them successfully. Just this week, for example, our team has convened bar and restaurant owners, other businesses, educators, faith leaders, and youth sports organizations. We not only provide guidance and support, but also listen to their concerns and questions. This is a collaborative and iterative process that acknowledges, responds, and respects a rapidly changing set of circumstances due to the pandemic. And while our situation may demand that we continually adapt our actions, know that the overarching purpose driving them remains the same. 
we remain unwavering in our overarching goals to keep people safe and healthy, to prevent our healthcare system from becoming overburdened, to keep our businesses open and our children in school. And the purpose of these briefings is not only to keep you informed of the latest news, but to engage you and ask you for your help in flattening the curve and protecting our community. Tomorrow's game day provides us all with an opportunity to do just that. The health department and other city agencies continue to work with event committees and the business community to develop safe protocols to ensure that our businesses and public can enjoy game days. This includes expanding opportunities outdoors, wearing masks, and observing physical distancing. A phrase you will hear a lot this football season is home gating. And by this, we mean small gatherings at home, ideally just with members of your own household. Husker Athletics is a unifying force for our state. Let's keep that enthusiasm a source of pride by keeping our game day activities safe. For guidance on how to safely home gate, please visit covid19.lincoln.ne.gov. We're also mindful that the economic toll of COVID-19 has and continues to have on residents and businesses. There is some recent good news for businesses and organizations that we want to promote and amplify to the greatest extent possible. Eligible businesses and nonprofits can now apply for a new round of Federal CARES Act funding being administered by the state of Nebraska. Applications uh, windows have already opened and much of the funding will be distributed on a first come first serve basis. If your organization did not receive a grant from the state earlier this year or if you own a bar, a restaurant, hotel, event center or other eligible business or organization, make sure you check out this new funding opportunity and apply as soon as possible. The application window closes on November 13th. You can find out more information by going to the website covid19.lincoln.ne.gov and checking out our business resources tab. You can also go directly to the state site at coronavirus.nebraska.gov slash programs and grants. Program operators are available at 1-833-500-8810 to answer questions you may have about this next round of funding. Please help us get the word out and ensure that our local businesses, churches, and organizations get the help that they need. And with that, we'd be happy to open it up to questions from the media. Mayor, this is Bill with 1011. I apologize if I missed this earlier because the feed was cutting out a bit. Does the updated DHM include a new date for the mask mandate or will that expire on October 31st? Uh, the requirement of wearing face coverings will continue in the next DHM. Other questions? Uh, this is Brown with Channel 8. How long does the DHM go for? Just through the end of November. You know, we are doing monthly updates to the DHMs, but that doesn't mean that we might not update them midstream, just like the governor did recently, depending on circumstances. But it is just the monthly marker we're using to kind of guide community expectations about when they would likely hear from us again. Other questions? Uh, I have a couple I'm sorry, our connection's not great. Brent, is that you speaking? Yep. Okay. This is Brent. Go ahead. A couple questions for Director Lopez. All right, she'll be right here. Hi, Brent. Hi, Director Lopez. Um, we were told that some members of the health department uh, went to a meeting with uh, other, <clears throat> excuse me, health department officials from Big Ten communities uh, on October 15th to talk about metrics um, used in each community as it relates to playing football. Um, can you tell us a little bit about what was discussed in that meeting? I attended the meeting. Um, I was invited by other big, uh, health directors from the Big Ten communities. And there was just a discussion about how the health departments in those communities work with their universities. Uh, 
their Big Ten schools and uh, what metrics to look at for football and how to communicate, um, you know, communication pathways between the two. In Lincoln, we're really fortunate um, that we've been working with our university since last April or the beginning of May, uh, both the athletic department and the campus. And many of the metrics and the information being discussed was already information that we had. And we actually, um, I was able to share with them the close working relationship that we have in the work we do with contact tracing and the work and the commitment from both the athletic department and our chancellor about doing what's best for our whole community, uh, which is a little different, I realized and learned in other states that there always isn't that same relationship happening. So it was very beneficial to hear what was being said. And some of the metrics were uh, discussed were the positivity rate and the cases per 100,000 in the community, similar metrics that we're already working on here. Any other questions? Again, with 1011, you know, we, we've heard a lot about home gating. We've also heard, you know, the city making adjustments to try to help bars and restaurants during this tough time. You know, I guess, over, what is your advice? Do you want people going out and giving these businesses business or, or would you prefer people uh, to, to stay home during times like this? Our goal is to keep people healthy and safe. And so we want to make sure that they are making informed choices based on our continually evolving set of circumstances. So of course, uh, we're looking at ways to mitigate risk. The least amount of risk is to stay home. We know that some people will make that choice. For those who choose to go out, we are then supporting their safety as well by working with bars and restaurants and organizations to make sure that safety precautions are in place that make it easy for people who choose to go out to keep that distance, to have the masking, and to have good hand hygiene and avoid sort of confined close contact, uh, confined spaces with close contact. Because we do want to support our local businesses. We just want to make sure everything is operating optimally for preventing the spread of COVID-19. The health department is available and working around the clock. Uh, we are happy to support any businesses or organizations that have questions about how to safely operate so that we can continue to try to move forward through this pandemic together. Um, that is my message for the public. Thank you. Other questions? All right. Well, thank you so much for tuning in. We appreciate your concern and care. Please know that what you do, the choices you make, make a difference. Please continue to wear a mask, wash your hands, watch your distance, and avoid crowds. And we'll be back next week. Thank you.
sure you wear your mask and watch your distance. So outside the Eagle 12 last one, there's no location specific new outbreaks to be aware of. You know, uh, we're working on a few areas right now, Bill, and if there is something to share, we will continue to share. We don't have all the data completed right now, but we're constantly monitoring, and if there is something, we'll, we will come forward as we always have. Thank you. Uh-huh. All right, any further questions? All right, thank all right, you. Oh, Sorry, go ahead. Uh, Maya, over here from KMTV. Just one last one. Again, you know, we've had a lot of viewers call again just because tomorrow is game day. Back to the home gating thing. Just last words of just advice or uh, for people wanting to watch the game and how to do it safely. Yeah, I mean, there is still going to be joy with Husker football this season. Uh, I think we can all feel grateful that there is a season. It won't look like past seasons, except maybe the 1918 season. So we're asking people if they want to have the least um, level of risk to stay home and watch the game with members of their household. If they decide that they are going to gather in a small group, which by the way is where we're seeing cases right now, do it safely. Limit the numbers, try to keep it to two households at the most, and wear masks. Watch your distance, bring your separate food, try not to have close contact or interaction that involves you know, physical connection. It's not easy, we get that, but it is a lot easier to deal with than the grief of someone becoming severely ill, landing in the hospital, or worst of all, dying. These are choices we're taking so that we can protect one another, protect our community, and frankly, protect the football season too. We, we, uh, we want this to be a successful season that we can be proud of. Thank you, Mayor. Mm -hmm. Any others, please? Okay. Thank you so much. Have a safe and joyful weekend.